Thank you very much for this opportunity and welcome everyone. My name is Nicolas Cuevas. I am a PhD student uh, at Bayreuth University in Germany and I work on philosophy of language. My project is about interpretation and objectivity. Right now, my main, main interests are in communication, meaning determination, and this, this kind of, of things. Today, I will, I, I will speak about uh, what do we do with objects and interpretation and semantic role determination. So, the content will be uh, five slides. The first one will be a short introduction to Frege's notion of reference and uh, my interpretation of it as a substance, substance concept. Uh, substance concept is, is a Casiter's idea. So I will apply this idea to Frege's notion of reference to show what's the problem with it. The second slide is the problem of predication that comes with interpreting uh, reference as a substance con concept. The third slide is going to be about um, uh, the Davidson's proposal on meaning where reference does not play uh, any semantic role, any semantic important role to determine meaning. And then the next slide will be a question of, okay, if reference itself does not play any um, role in meaning determination, what do we do with objects? And the proposal, and Davidson's proposal on translation. And to close, uh, it is my, my proposal that maybe is not, not yet so, so precise, but I, I want to present it to you. It is about how uh, being an object and objecthood is determined by um, the loss of the system or uh, the loss of the language, right? The, the, the language network and how the, all the propositional content is related. And the, what we do in action with that, right? That's, that, that will be the general idea. So let's get into it so we can, we can have a time for questions. Okay, so Frege, Frege uses two um, main concepts to explain meaning. The first one is sense. I am not worried about sense at this point. The sense is how objects are presented to us. He, he says the sense of it is how the referent or the object is presented to us. And the referent it is the object. So here I have a quote that says, the referent of a proper name is the object itself, which we designate by, by it means. By this interpretation, uh, the notion of reference is based on substance. Why? Because Frege is presupposing that objects are by themselves independently of us, right? independently in the way, of the way on how we access to them or, what, or how we talk to them. That's, that's, a, that's the idea. So substance is the backup for reference. In this sense, the singular term moon, for example, does have a clear reference, the moon, and it has a lot of senses. We can talk about the moon in very different ways. One way is calling it the moon, other way will be calling it in Spanish, la luna, other way will be calling it in German, der Mond. So the, those are all different senses of the same object, he will say, of the same reference. However, uh, he got problems with, with other kinds of singular terms, right? As Odysseus. Odysseus do, does not have a reference. Odysseus, the main character of the Iliad, uh, does not have uh, uh, of the Odyssey. I'm sorry. Uh, does not have a, a reference or a substance that uh, backs up the designation. Right? The name des designates something that doesn't exist. So the whole co the whole concept of reference is permeated by the idea of substance and existence in that in that way. It is backed up by the, by a metaphysical um, concept of substance. But he, he will have problems with this because if for him, he has an, uh, a semantics where 
every expression must have a sense and a reference. So he he will have trouble with the problem of predication because he will have to explain how maybe sometimes two uh, different uh, substances or particulars or objects are related in just one fact. And this, this will be problematic. The problem of predication is how uh, are names or other singular terms related to predicates. That's the idea. So in this, uh, one of the famous examples in philosophical language is the one about Theotetus since. So what is a, pro a problem? Because we have this singular name Titus, and it is well pretty obvious or easy to find a reference to find an object that uh, backs up this name. However, the predicate uh, X sits. It doesn't have a reference, right? It's, it doesn't have a clear, a clear, substantial reference. There is no entity in the world that is called X sits because this expression, well. For, for for instance, is incomplete. It has a variable, and it has a predicate or a property, right? The property of being seated. This is the same problem that Plato has with universals, right? He uh, how particulars and universals are related. If universals has uh, like, has like some kind of existence by themselves, or it is just instantiated in one object or in one fact, and that kind of thing. So here we find the same problem. How Tititus, the object Tititus, is related to the property of being seated. If the, if the property is something like by itself. For, for Frege, here he has a, a, a really big problem because he must say that the expression um, exits must have also a reference. And he will say, that the reference is an, incom an incomplete object. And the incomplete object, uh, he will sometimes call, call it a functor, or in, in other scenarios, he will call it in, in other ways. But this is intuitively really hard to digest, right? Because we, we, we think about objects in a natural way or a common way, daily basis where an object is related with something we can almost all the time see or touch, or, yeah, in, in, most, in most ways, things we can see or, or, or touch. But then, uh, how we can explain the relationship between these two objects, Tititus and the property of being seated? We may think like, hey, well, yeah, we just propose a relation. Right? Theodos is in a relationship with the property of being seated. For example, participating by it, like Plato's uh, proposed. However, this relationship must be all, also another object, right? Another, the reference of the relation must be a fact. And then this relationship must be supported in, by other relationship because how that relationship is related to the fact of Theodos being seated. And we, we can get in an infinite regress problem here. So the, the, the idea that every expression has a, an, a reference or an object that must be some, in some way substance backed up uh, may cause the problem of predication. How, how we, we get out, out of this problem? Well, there is there is another way to characterize semantics. For, uh, for instance, Davidson's proposal about using through theoretic semantics to explain meaning. What's the difference? Frege semantics about sense and reference uh, relies on the substance, on the objects that uh, we designate by our language. That's to explain meaning, right? We use the object and the way we speak about the object to explain meaning. That's uh, Frege's idea. Davidson says, well, it, it seems that um, the reference or the objects cannot explain um, meaning in this way because we will get in the problem of predication and we will have like a 
big ontology with a lot of freaky uh, entities, such as the entity of being seated. That that would be strange. A lot of forms or things like that 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 may not suit the actual ontology or the daily the day to basis ontology of the speakers. So we will explain meaning not by directly addressing to reference, but by looking uh, the the whole by looking the whole system of language, right? So meaning here is explained by the relationship between the words of the language of the speaker. Here is an example. Uh, he, the, the main mechanism that Davidson uses is convention T. Convention T is um, how we translate one sentence of uh, a language we do not know to a language we actually know. That's the idea. So in the, in the left part, you'll see a sentence that it is quoted that represent that represents the sentence that we do not know. There, there is an uh, an structure, an 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 structure of how we think the sentence may go. And on the right part, you will find uh, the sentence that we understand with the meaning we think it has. And in the thing that connects the two sentences are uh, the predicate is true and uh, if and only if, if I'm, I'm to I'll be conditional. So why, why this is plain meaning? I am not going to get too much into it, but it is it is simple. The we the predicate of if is true uh, is a primitive one. Is the one we use to explain meaning. So we know most of the times how, when something is true and when something is not, and they build from that. So re, the being true is not uh, necessarily a relationship between a sentence and the, and the word, but uh, two sentences, right? In this case, about a translation. And the second part is the preconditional because if the sentence of the left is true, we need that the sentence of the right is true too. And if the sentence of the left is false, we need that it is well translated to the right part to ensure the semantics, to ensure that we keep the truth value of it. So why, why I have this example here? I chose this example because it, it shows how we speak about objects and how we can treat them in different ways. So, for example, if someone came to me and tell me, hey, I have an hippopotamus in my fridge, the first thing that will come to my mind is something like this image, and I will think, like, no, this person is crazy. Uh, a hippopotamus doesn't uh, fit in a fridge. So maybe this person is talking about something else. I can engage in conversation and interpretation process with this person and ask, hey, uh, what do you mean? What, what do you mean do you have a hippopotamus? I, I, what color is it? And, this person could tell me, no, this, uh, the hippopotamus is orange, and I use it to make juice every morning. So my first thought, that is, I, I have an hippopotamus in my fridge, is true if, if and only if she has an hippopotamus in, his, in her fridge, uh, is false. It is not a good translation, so I will adjust. And I will say, ah, okay, maybe this person is calling this aspect of the word that I call orange, she calls it. Uh, hippopotamus. He is using a different word for a different aspect of reality. And uh, and through interpretation, I will get, I will get to it. I will get to what she refers. Right. At first, if I understand the meaning of her sentence of her utterance, then I can find the reference, not the other way, because with forget it, it was the other way. We had to know the reference. To understand the meaning. Right now, we finding the reference. It, it is quite, it's part of the task of understanding the meaning, because of course, reference and object has a place in uh, meaning determination, but it is not the um, explanation of meaning. Objects do not explain meaning, but they determine it. So, which is the problem with this with this proposal? 
The problem is that we speak about the word, about objects, subjects, and relations, and the question that arises is what of those things we are talking about and how they play a role in the, in determination, the, the, the meaning determination. The actual problem is that sometimes we do not know what people are talking about because uh, in interpretation, it is an active degree process. It is not something of black and white. Understanding someone is not a yes or no question. It is a question of how much do you understand the other person? How much do you understand the thing that he is saying, that she is saying, and what is she talking about? And that's why we engage in communication to try to determine in some way what are we talking about. So how, what, what, what do we do to, to solve this problem? The problems of the inscrutability of reference. We speak, we triangulate. So the main example is Quine's scenario of radical translation where uh, there is a guy or a girl in the woods and he finds uh, someone that lives there, a community that lives there, and every time uh, a bunny jumps out of the bushes, the, the person screams, Gava guy. So, the person from the community screams Gava guy, and the other person that comes from other part of the world writes Gava guy in, in how she thinks it should be written, and starts in engaging in communication with the natives to actually understand why they mean about Gava guy. Because Gava guy could, be, could mean several things, for example, they, it could mean, oh, a bunny jumped from the bushes, for example. Or it could mean, oh, a bunny. It could mean, oh, a four-legged animal, for example. And the person just will know what does it mean when she engages a lot and triangulates. She speaks, oh, okay, this is Gava guy, this is Gava guy, this is Gava guy. At some point, the indetermination will be less and she will know more or less what they are talking about. Getting a hundred percent of understanding and interpretation, it seems impossible. The idea is to optimize it, to get the most of it. Right? So, okay. But then, uh, I will come back to, to the question is how then objects play a role uh, or what are objects, right? If objects are not substance that is independent from us and that backups uh, our way of talking about the world, what is it? In this functional approach, the approach of Davidson where meaning is not defined and not explained by objects, by extra linguistic facts such as objects, objectivity gets another, another twist. Objectivity and objects are not the thing we, we presuppose as being independent from us, but being an object is defined by the, by the system we got. I mean, it depends on how we speak about it, right? The, the, the system of our words, the system of our words, will define what it is an object, what, what plays the role of an object. Because in some, in some cases, some proposition, a word can, can, can be used as an object, and in other ones, it can be used as a subject, or in other ones, can be used as another thing. In that sense, uh, an object is not something that is predetermined, and it is not a uh, substance, but it is a place within a system. So for example, in this, in this system, we will not have problems with abstract objects such as numbers, because numbers will be defined by their place on the system, right? So the number one is going to be defined because it's the, it's the result of the equation n plus one equals x. And the place number one is the place before the zero, uh, after the zero, sorry, and before the two. That place within the system, within the series, is what gives the object one 
its traits, its essence between quotes. It is the same with daily day to day day to day objects, because we most of the time do not speak about objects the same the same the same way. For example, we can speak our ourselves about uh, simple objects in most of our daily interactions. For example, uh, when I say no, Nic Nicholas is tired. So there, Nicholas is a simple object. But when I go to the doctor and say hey. Uh, and the doctor says, hey, Nicholas, does your arm uh, hurt? And I'll say, yes, there I am not a simple object in that, in, in, in that context, in that utterance, but I am a complex object that comes with parts. So that's the main idea. The main idea is that the semantic normativity that explains meaning, the relationship between propositions and, and words, it is expressed by us in our daily basis. So we can use the words in a correct or in a correct way, depending on the regularity we use. It is not a conventional thing, but it is about it is about regularity. And in this sense, then objects will be the the aspects of the world that we treat as objects within an utterance. So they are not objects by themselves but they are objects in the utterance, which, which plays the role of the object in this utterance, right? That's, that's the main idea. So that, that would be my proposal, because Davidson just gets until here about triangulation, and he says, yeah, objects and events of the world cause us to speak about the world in some way, but he doesn't develop that. So I think that we considers functional approach where we can uh, rely on the system of the laws of our own language and our own practices to determine objectivity and knowledge and objecthood, we get a new perspective of it. We do not rely in an object, object itself, but we rely on our practices and our norm, norms of that practices. So I think I think I will finish there because uh, to to let some time to for questions. Thank you. Okay, Nicholas. Thank you so much. We have about five minutes for a Q and A session. So, are there any questions? Yes, we have a question here from the audience. Yeah. Uh, do you distinguish uh, uh, the indeterminacy of reference and inscrutability of reference? Do you think that uh, it is an important distinction? I mean, one notion is uh, uh, epistemological and another is um, metaphysical, or uh, it's not important because uh, in the case of uh, inscrutability, uh, uh, there is no uh, uh, there is no uh, effect of, uh, of reference at all. Thank you, thank you very much for the question. Yeah, it is a, it is a, it's a really good question. I think it must, it must be differentiated, yeah? Because where, as, as you said, one notion is epistemological, epistemological and the other one is metaphysical. So it depends on one, on, on which we expression use to define the problem, right? I, I am right now, as, as you could know, <laughs> as you can notice that I am struggling to find which which are the terms I am looking to to use precisely because it it depends on the notion I use on which debate I am going to speak about and I am looking to speak about in the debate of philosophy of language rather than metaphysics or epistemology because I think we can use semantics to explain epistemology. So it is part of Davidson's project, for example, to speak about the inscrutability of reference, but explain it not by appealing to knowledge or epistemic states or cognitive states, but to appeal on how a meaning is fixed by objects or which one is the role of reality in determined meaning. And the metaphysical, um, debate is another debate that is sometimes related with realism, anti-realism, quietism, and that kind of um, notions. And 
I am not sure yet if I would find the solution I am looking for there because most of the terms, most of the notions, most of the concepts, there are substance concepts. They are related to substance and not to functional uh, concepts that relies on laws and normativity and systems as a whole, but rather as how does reality backs up our our language, our language practices. So I will I will go with inscrutability of reference because it is uh, a little bit closer to the semantic explanation, and I will change it. I will not think it about as an epistemological problem, but rather than as a communicational problem because we can find or we can understand each other, get in in a way, in an optimum way, <laughs> at least a good high degree percent. If we can uh, deambiguate and speak all the and speak on which are the traits we are looking at when we are speaking at objects, right? So I mean, if like the, the example of the hippopotamus, if I just keep with the hippopotamus description of being in the fridge, I will think that the speaker is crazy. But in engaging by an interpretation process, I can uh, narrow the information to see which is the aspect or which uh, and which is the object in, in my system that fulfills the same role in the speaker's system. So yeah, thank you very much for the question. Okay, so we have some time for a short question. Are there any questions? I guess there are no questions. So again, thank you so much, Nicholas.